How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our next episode on how to program JavaScript. Now in this lesson you're going to learn how to actually do something using all the JavaScript you've been learning all the previous lessons in this course here. So I thought we were going to do our first project today since you just learned about functions, which is something we're going to be using in this project we're going to do today. So what I thought we would try to build using JavaScript inside an actual website is a basic calculator. And yes, I know a calculator is not the most exciting thing, but with all the things we've learned so far, I think that a calculator might be the best thing to do. So we can try to utilize some of the different skills we've been learning using JavaScript in this course here. So what I have in front of me here is a basic index page inside my editor. And inside the index page, I link to a main.js file, which is an external JavaScript file that I'm going to create the JavaScript inside of. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, we're going to set up the HTML code or the HTML markup that we're going to be using in this project here. And then afterwards, we're going to create the JavaScript code that will actually do something using the data we have inside our HTML. Now what I want to do is I want the user to be able to go into my website and then using a regular HTML form, I want the user to be able to type in two numbers and then choose if they want to add, subtract, multiply or divide uh, using a basic calculator. Now the way I'm going to do that is first of all by creating a regular HTML form inside the body tags. So I'm going to just say we have a form and again creating a form is something you should know by now since you need to know HTML before you jump into JavaScript. So we need to create a basic HTML form. Now, do notice I didn't include a action and a method inside the form as an attribute. I just left it clean. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a couple of inputs and then a drop down selector where they can choose if they want to add, subtract, multiply, and divide inside the calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we have value one, which is just going to be plain text inside the website. So we're to refresh it, you can see we have value one. Then I want to include a input type. So we're going to say input. The type is going to be text. I want to delete the name and the value because we don't actually need them. Then I want to go down to the next line and include a value two that they can write in, which is going to be the second number to choose. And I also want the input to be a text type. Then I'm going to create a drop down that's going to allow the user to actually choose what kind of operation they want to uh, create with these two numbers here. So we're going to say we have a operator, colon, and then I'm going to create a select type. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the values here. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in between the select elements here. And I'm going to say we have a option, an option one is going to be, let's go ahead and write something like add. Then we're gonna add a value inside the option tag. So we're gonna say value, set it equal to add. Then I'm gonna copy paste it about three more times. So we have three more operators to have inside the calculator. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the, the last three that we need to have inside the calculator. So the next one is going to be minus. So I'm just gonna write min, and then div for divide mul or multiply. And then I can just write the full word inside uh, the actual option text here. So we can say minus divide and multiply like so. So what we have now, as you can see, is a couple of inputs and a drop down that allow for the user to actually choose what they want to do inside the calculator here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a button so we can actually calculate whatever's going on inside this form here. So I'm going to create a button element and I'm gonna keep it as a button type. I'm going to delete the name attribute here. And inside the button, I'm going to create some kind of name for the button. So we're going to call it calculate. So the user knows what to actually do with it. So now you can see we have a couple of inputs. We have a operator. And we also have a button in order to calculate whatever's going on inside the form here. Now, the next thing we need to do is not something related to the form. It's something related to what we're going to do with JavaScript. So in order to select the values from inside these inputs and also the operator here, we need to add a couple of IDs to these HTML elements we have inside the HTML code or markup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my first input and I'm going to create an ID attribute, which again, you should know about if you know about HTML. So I'm going to call this one value one. Then I'm going to copy it, paste it down to the next value we have down here, the next input, I'm going to change it to value two. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the select 
inside the, the form here. I'm going to call this one operator. And this is just so we can grab the values using JavaScript. So it's nothing more than that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go inside our main.js file or the JavaScript file, and we're going to create the JavaScript code that's actually going to calculate uh, the numbers inside this form here. So inside the main.js file, I'm going to create a named function. So we're going to say function. I'm going to call this one calc, just to give it a name, curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets, we need to do three different things. First, we need to grab the values from inside the form. Then we need to calculate them. And then we need to output them inside the website. So when we're doing this, I'm going to be using a couple of different things we've been learning from some of the previous lessons. I'm going to be using methods, properties. I'm going to be using conditional statements. So there's quite a few things we're going to be using inside these curly brackets. So you will get some things uh, refreshed from the previous lessons here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a variable that is going to contain the value from the first input inside the form. So we're going to say we have a variable called something like a, just to make it simple, I'm going to set it equal to, and then we need to grab the value. Now, when we grab data from inside uh, the DOM, which is what we call um, <laughs> the DOM is something we haven't talked about before, but it's something we will talk about in a future episode. For now, you should just know that when we want to select a uh, element from inside our current website, the one that is loaded inside the browser, we can do so using the DOM, which stands for Document Optic Model. So what I can do is I can say I want to select the document that is part of the DOM I'm talking about, and I want to select a specific element from inside the website. I can do that using a method, which we haven't talked about in the properties method episode, I think two episodes ago, but this one is very good for you to know about. And we will talk more about this one in a future episode. So this is one called query selector parentheses, because it's a method. And what I can do here is I'm going to say I want to select a specific element based on a class or an ID. So what I can do here is I can say we have an ID called value one which is the value we have inside the first input. Now we do need to put this inside a string, like so. And now that we grab the elements, we need to get a specific property from it. And again, this is something we talked about in the properties and methods episode two episodes ago. So watch that if you're a bit confused about what we're doing here. Um, I want to get a specific property and it's going to be the value from this input. You know, whatever the user type into the input inside the browser here. And we can do that using the value property when it comes to inputs. So now we grabbed the actual value, but there's a slight problem here because what we're doing is we're grabbing a number from this specific input and we want to calculate two numbers. And to do that, it would be better to have two actual numbers, you know, number data types and not strings. But when we send the data from the form in here, it's going to be sent as a string. So what is going to happen now is that if I were to write two in here and click calculate, it's going to give me two, but as a string. So we need to convert it into a number. And I hope I didn't just confuse the heck out of you, but we're going to do that right now using a second method. So I'm going to wrap this entire value we just grabbed here, which is this entire thing. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to put it inside a second method called parse int, which is going to take data that we just have and insert into the parentheses and convert it into a string or not a string, a number. Darn it. I just confused you even more. So uh, what we just did here was we did that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to grab the second value. So I'm going to copy this, paste it down. I'm going to create a B variable. And I'm going to grab the second value from the second input. So I'm going to change it to ID value two, which is the second input here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the operator type. Now the operator type is not a number. It is in fact a string that we can just go ahead and grab and use as it is. So we don't need to use the parse int in this example here. So I'm going to copy, paste it below, and then I'm going to change the variable name to OP, which stands for operator, at least in my head it does. And I'm going to delete the parse int because we don't actually need it. And then I'm also going to change the ID name in here to operator B2. 
because again, that's what we created the name for it inside uh, the select element we have inside the form. Now, there's one more variable we need to define before we move on to the calculate part of this calculator here, which is going to be a variable called calculate. And I will explain why exactly we need to declare this one right now without assigning it to anything in just a second. So we have a variable called calculate that has no value yet. So we're going to move on to the next part where we're going to actually calculate using the calculator. So I'm going to create a couple of conditional statements which we talked about in a previous episode. So if you're not familiar with conditional statements, then go back and watch that episode first. So I'm going to create a if statement which is going to say that if a certain condition has been met inside the parentheses, then it's going to run the code inside these curly brackets here. So what I want to check for inside the condition of this if statement is what OP is equal to. So if OP is equal to a string called add, then I want to add the two numbers that the user uh, submitted inside the form. So I want to say calculate is going to be equal to A plus B, and just one more piece of information. The reason that we created this parse end up here to convert the number into a number type is because if I were to not do that, then A and B are going to be strings. And this plus symbol here is going to be seen as a string operator and not as a way to add two numbers together. So instead of having, let's say I choose one and two for these two values, then it wouldn't be equal to three. Instead, it's going to be one and then it's going to add the two next to it because it's a string operator, which means that we would get 12 instead of three, which if that makes sense. So that's why we needed to use this parse int up here. Now, after doing this, we then assigned a value to calculate. Ah, uh, And the reason we needed to do this in this specific way, we couldn't actually do this because if we were to do that, then when we get to this next one here, we'll create a else if statement if I were to check is if OP is equal to, let's say, minus, and I were to do this again, except I'm going to minus instead, then it's going to rewrite variable calculate into a, another variable. And it's going to mess it up if we declare the same variable with the same name multiple times inside our code. So this is something that's going to mess up the code if we do this. So it's very important we declare the variable and then add the values to it afterwards in order to not mess this up. So after doing this, we just need to copy paste two more times, I believe. And then we're going to change the third one into divide, which is div, and the fourth one into multiply, which is mul. And then we just need to add the values here. So instead of minus, we say divide and multiply. So now we're done calculating the different values inside the calculator, and now we need to output it into the browser so the user can actually see what exactly the result is going to be from uh, this calculation here. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to console log because that's the way we know how to do it so far. We will do something slightly different in just a second. I'm going to console log calculate, which is going to be the result. And it's going to tell me the result inside the console of the browser. So if we were to inspect, go inside the console and then say two and two, and I want to add them, calculate. Then you can see that right now, it's not actually going to do anything inside the browser. Now the reason for that is that we didn't add an event into our HTML code. And remember the last episode, I said we we're gonna talk about events in the future. You're gonna get a small taste of it in this episode here. So it's going to be another piece of new information besides talking about the DOM earlier. Um, so I'm going to add an event to my HTML markup here. An event is basically a way for us to tell the HTML that when the user does something to the website, then do something. So what I'm going to say is that when the user clicks the button inside the form, then it needs to run the function that we have inside our JavaScript file. So I'm going to say that I want to add an event which is a on click set it equal to double quotes. And the cool thing about events, and we will talk about this in the future, is that we can add events directly into the HTML as attributes, which is something that sort of combines JavaScript and HTML together in a perfect harmony, if you could say that. Um, but this is a way we can actually create a event 
using HTML. We can also do it in a second way, which is directly inside our JavaScript code, but we're not going to get into that in this episode here. So we're going to create an event called onClick, which in the name means that when we click this button, then it needs to do something. So inside the double quotes, I want to run a function inside JavaScript called calc. So we're going to say calc parentheses. And now if I were to go inside my browser here, say one, not Q, but one plus one, calculate, then we get two inside the console here. So this is how we can actually create a calculator by combining JavaScript with HTML in order to actually do something inside a website that the user can actually use for something. Now, one thing I want to change here is the fact that right now we're outputting it inside the console, which is not very exciting. We want to actually show the user what the value is inside the website. So we're going to do something similar to what we did at the beginning of the JavaScript script or the function, which is I want to insert the value inside the actual website. So I'm going to create a div box right underneath my form, and I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to set it equal to something like results. And I'm just going to go ahead and close off the tags here because we don't need to actually write something in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my JavaScript file at the bottom here where we set console log. And instead of console logging it, I want to insert the value in between two HTML tags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we have a document, which we talked about previously, it means that we're grabbing the document that we're inside of, which is the index page. And then inside this document, I want to grab a specific element based on an ID. So I'm going to say we have a query selector parentheses. Then I want to grab an element that has an ID set to results. And then I want to insert this value from the calculate uh, variable we have up here into this element. So I want to say we have dot inner HTML is equal to calculate. So what inner HTML basically does is that it inserts a value in between a pair of HTML tags. So now if I were to go inside the browser, I'm just going to go ahead and close down the console because we don't need that anymore. Refresh it. And then I want to say two, and let's go ahead and do something else like divide by two is going to be equal to one. And we can actually see it inside the browser here. So now I do want to point one more thing out, which is if I were to go inside the index page, you can actually see that there's no value in between the div tags. But if I were to go inside the browser, right click and inspect it, you can then see that in between the div tags inside the browser, we do actually have a number in between the div tags. So what I did is I loaded all the content from uh, our HTML page, and then I inserted additional content after the browser had been loaded, which is one of the things that JavaScript can do since JavaScript constantly runs in the background even after the page has been loaded. So this is how we can create a calculator inside a website using JavaScript. It's a very simple example to sort of bring together what we learned so far in all these lessons here. And in the future, we will get into more examples once we learn a little bit more about JavaScript. And I hope to make them a little bit more simple than in this episode, because we did talk about a few things that we haven't talked about before, like the DOM and, and events, which is also something we haven't talked about before. So I hope you got this working and I hope it wasn't too confusing. If you didn't get it working, you can download the lesson files in the description if you want to, you can kind of compare and contrast to see what you might have done wrong if something didn't work. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.